Hello everybody, this is Justin from KQS, and this week, being Halloween with zombies and monsters, I will be doing a double review of Resident Evil Umbrella and Darkseid Chronicles on the PSN. Both Resident Evil Chronicles games are literally summaries of the full games, from Resident Evil Zero to Code Veronica, and leading up to the events of RE4, showing the fall of Umbrella to why Krauser and Leon hate each other. It doesn't tell the full story of the Resident Evil games, just a brief summary with the best boss fights like Tyrants and Nemeses. This game will bring you up to speed for Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. The graphics style reminds me of the old GameCube games, which is not terrible, but it kind of looks like from the early 2000s, and just because it's in 720p HD does not mean it looks like it. It personally just kind of looks like a 480p widescreen Wii game that's been smoothed down. The sound, on the other hand, is a different story. If you listen very closely, you can actually hear all the original music to the games, which is actually very cool for nostalgia purposes and the voice work is actually pretty good. A lot better than uh, House of the Dead or any other light gun game. The Chronicles games are a on-rail light gun shooters in which you're encouraged to shoot everything in the very fun interactive levels, which hide everything from ammo to powerful herbs, and even secret files to look at in the bonus features. Uh, the game can be played with a controller but it's meant to be played as a traditional light gun game, so it has a bigger advantage over the Wii, especially the ability to calibrate your controller. On the Wii, the cursor looks like you're more aiming from the hip rather than down the sights, which is how you're supposed to shoot in real life. There is a few ways to use the move controller. Um, there's the normal mode, which just has no plastic shell with all your buttons easily accessible, there's a simple pistol attachment. But I really recommend using the sharpshooter, which looks like a machine gun. And it looks very cool in the old school PS1 gray. Though, if you're extra cool like me, <clears throat> there's a extra AK-47 Resident Evil sharpshooter edition. And I will put a link on the description below. Umbrella and Darkseid are very similar, but have their differences. Um, staying true to the light gun game formula, each game is divided into little levels, and during the beginning of the level, uh, Chronicles lets you customize what extra weapon you want to bring into the fight. In Umbrella, uh, bringing 150 bullets of machine gun ammo sounds like a lot, but one problem is you can really burn through ammo very fast. Because to get ammo, you need to demolish everything and remember where every bullet is hiding. And honestly, ammo can be very scarce, especially during boss fights. Um, boss fights give you just barely enough ammo to push through. Shoot a few more bullets than you're supposed to, and you can either just simply die or be literally stuck in boss limbo. Uh, like this boss fight here. The only way to damage the boss is to push him into the light, which is done by shooting his mouth with the shotgun. Do too little damage, and the monster will push you back. And once you run out of ammo, <laughs> you better hope you are lucky enough to knock it back with the weak pistol, or just simply just drop the controller and reset the fight, which is extremely frustrating. Checkpoint system could be a little bit better. Uh, there's only a few checkpoints within the level. Uh, there's one in the middle in which you get a kind of mid-level break showing off your score. Uh, the next checkpoint is during boss fights, so if you die before a checkpoint, you're forced to go back to the start of the level, which really sucks. Um, both Chronicle games are quite short and can actually be beat in a few days, so Capcom intentionally upped the difficulty. Even on easy, it's actually possible to die quite fast. 
Um, Dark Side does fix a lot of Umbrella's problems, but it introduces a few of, of its own. The nice thing is they actually fix the interface, so you can see a little bit more instead of just a bunch of text and static pictures. Um, ammo is pretty plentiful this time, and you're very encouraged to hold down the trigger. And probably one of the best <laughs> little additions is you can actually upgrade your pistol. Yeah, it's a stupid thing to point out, but when you're playing on the harder difficulties and you're out of ammo, you better hope that you get extra headshots on your pistol. Um, the upgrade system is a lot better this time. Instead of getting star points based on your rank, like Umbrella, in Dark Side you actually find money lying around, which is a little bit more work, but you actually get a lot more customization, in which you can choose what specific skill stat, whatever you want to upgrade. That helps a lot compared to the umbrella upgrading system, which only allows specific stats, and I'd say the best addition to dark side is adding co-op from the start, or you can actually have double guns if you really want. Though one thing I think is silly is kind of having the co-op characters on the screen, because they actually tend to get in your way at the worst moments. Um, one thing I really did not like about Dark Side is the really crazy camera. It's like literally watching an episode of Cops. It's extremely shaky, which makes it very tough to get a clear shot at times. And a shaky camera during a boss fight really sucks. Uh, turns a fight in which you should be unloading every bullet into that monster becomes a fight of patience because you're just gonna waste your bullets. Speaking of frustrating boss fights, a good example is the William Birkin fight. Um, once you take down his health bar, the fight is over, right? Absolutely not. You're hanging from a ledge and the only way to get up is to hit Birkin's eye on his arm and the problem with that is that the angle is not exactly an easy shot. And with the camera shaking, while well, he hits you with a pipe and drains your health, which kind of makes a health bar pointless. Both Umbrella and Dark Side Chronicles have a good fair share of unlockables. Uh, not only is there hidden Umbrella icons that give you Resident Evil files from the series, also sound files to give you further backstory, but just giving files is kind of lame, so in Umbrella Chronicles, you can unlock unlimited ammo by getting S ranks on the hardest difficulty of every single chapter. Though the Dark Side Chronicles gives you a very cool super launcher, which destructive weapons are very fun to use. Both Umbrella and Dark Side Chronicles is kind of like flying compared to the regular Resident Evil series, which is kind of like a road trip. With flying, it's short. There's an in-flight movie, a can of pop, a salty snack if you're lucky these days. And there, you're at your destination. You really don't see everything. Just the lights over the city and the food kind of sucks at the cost of time and convenience. With the road trip, the trip is very long and can take days. But, since you're taking your time, you can actually go explore, eat at the best restaurants, and really enjoy yourself. Does Umbrella and Dark Side Chronicles give you the full experience? Not at all. But it does give you the necessary backstory to understand the modern Resident Evil games. And it's a freaking light gun game. I personally miss the genre very much, and it makes me feel very nostalgic. Not to mention the games are less than 30 bucks as a bundle on the PlayStation Network. I really recommend these games if you have a move, because it works so well. But if you really want the whole Resident Evil experience, you can actually pick up the whole series digitally and play it the way it's supposed to be played. Okay, that's the end of the review. Hope you all enjoyed it. Just thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews and randomness. This is Justin from KQS, and until we meet again, comrades.